Our next speaker, Melissa, is uh, she's a community builder. She's a youth worker, and a policy, she supports policy writing by day, climbing, dancing, and exploring by night. She is an epic backpacker and takes trips on weekends, which are the defining activities of her adventurous life. Please welcome to the stage, Melissa Tierney. My mom always said that bad things happen in threes. In 2011, I miraculously survived three different times. The first one went like this. I had been traveling in Colombia in South America for about four months, and on the very last day of my trip, I decided to go to this huge tourist attraction. It's a Catholic cathedral carved out of salt inside of a cave. So we arrived at the cave, and they told us, me and my friend at the entrance, we don't have any guides today and we don't have any flashlights, but you should be fine, just go ahead. And so we said, okay, great, going into a cave. And we arrived, it was pretty brightly lit like this, but as soon as we turned the first corner, it was pitch black. And our hearts started to race as we felt along the cold stone walls and we found our way forward and I thought, eventually there must be light. And so we continued to explore just using our hands for guidance. And eventually I felt the outline of a cross and an entranceway, and so I called Anissa. I found the way into the next gallery. I stepped up onto the platform, past the cross, and then there was no ground beneath me. And I knew that I was falling because the wind was rushing past me so quickly. And I screamed, but I had fallen for so long that my scream ran out. So I started to scream again, but then thought, this is futile. I accepted this fate that I was going to be falling forever, that the ground was never going to come if it hadn't come yet. And so I felt my entire body relax as this calm washed over me, and then the ground came. I landed, I rolled once. I imagine that I stuck the landing perfectly, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Who could say it was dark? But I looked up and all I could see was darkness and all I could hear was Anissa screaming. And I knew she didn't speak any Spanish, only I did. And so I started shouting up to her what she needed to say in Spanish to get me help. But while I was doing this, while I just fell 45 feet, 14 meters, about five stories, I didn't have a scratch on me, but I did have a mild concussion. And so I had this goldfish type memory that every three seconds, I would be shouting up instructions for her, totally handling the situation, and then I wouldn't know where I was. And I would think, why am I in a dark pit all alone? And then I would hear her screaming and it would come back and I would cycle over and over and over, not knowing where I was, not knowing why I was in a dark pit all by myself. Here's an artist rendering that Anissa did for me later in the hospital. <laughs> that's her up in the window, that's me at the bottom. <laughs> So they started looking, they were trying to find me with their flashlights, but because I was almost five stories down, they couldn't see me. And there was a professional photographer that day, and so he started taking photos to see if he could light me up with his flash. And I kept thinking, why are they taking pictures of the girl in the pit? I'm not a tourist attraction. <laughs> because apparently concussions also make you a bit insolent. <laughs> and then Anissa calmed down, she was handling it. She was, I could hear her getting the instructions right in Spanish. And I said, Anissa, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to walk towards it. And then she started screaming again. That freaked her out. But I managed to walk the one kilometer to the end of this tunnel. And there, a local ambulance was waiting for me because Anissa had called for help. Now, in rural Colombia, a local ambulance is a rusty pickup truck that I get strapped to the back of. They take me to the village hospital, and then they realize what just happened. So they put me in a real ambulance, and they send me to the, to the city hospital. And they start doing every test imaginable. They put me in a bodyboard and a neck brace, and they tell me, you're never going to walk again. You had spinal damage. It's too severe. And I said, well, I just walked out of this cave. And they said, no, you are in your neck brace. You are never going to walk again. It's too severe. You just fell five stories. And I said, well, your logic is correct, I guess. I'm probably never going to walk again. So I'm here with the confusion from them as they complete a CT scan, an MRI, x-rays, every test that they have available, and everything's coming back negative for damage. But they know, as now I am convinced I know, that that can't be true. There must be damage. 
Meanwhile, Catholic Columbia, stories of angels falling five stories without a scratch spread really quickly. And so families like this one have arrived en masse saying, please, angel, can you just put your hand on my husband's knee so that you can heal him? And so I'm in this still, my memory is back, but I'm still really confused by what the doctors are saying and now what these families are saying. I know that I'm not an angel, I just got lucky, but they believe that I can heal them. And so is it wrong for me to engage in this with them if they believe that it will help them? I don't know. So I'm stuck in the middle of this really confusing state, still in a neck brace, convincing myself as I wiggle my toes, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, my toes are wiggling, when the best spinal surgeon in the country finally arrives. They've flown him in from the capital. And he takes out my chart, which is now this thick. He does some basic physical tests with me. And then he comes in and he says, how do you feel? I say, confused. <laughs> He says, what were you supposed to be doing today? And I said, I was supposed to be flying home to see my family. And he said, classic Colombian question, will you be happy there? <laughs> I said, yes, I will be happy at home with my family. And he said, in my medical opinion, I cannot explain what happened to you. As a Catholic man, I say that it's a miracle. As your doctor, I can't say anything, but it's time for you to go home. And so he took off my neck brace, I walked out, and I got on my plane to come home. A few years later, a couple of friends went back, and they showed their Canadian passports, and the people at the front said, do you know the, do you know the Canadian angel? And they said, we do, actually. And they said, oh my gosh, all the guys remember her. You have to tell her, there's floodlights everywhere, there's a guide for every person. So I got home, and people asked me, what changed in your life? And nothing really except that I felt more grateful for each day that I am lucky enough to be here, especially because two more times that year, I miraculously survived. But those are stories for another day. <laughs> Thank you.